Hello everybody, welcome to the round 6 trade targets and preview live stream for NRL Supercoach 2024. Hopefully you're all doing okay, Mike was turned off as confirmed um, and requested also by a few people in the chat as well. Great to see so many of you already watching which is fantastic. You can't see the hair yet, well, the hair is here. The hair is here. You've all given me an idea, I need to reach out to some hair companies out there and just start getting some sponsors. And uh, apologies for my um, my voice, it's probably a little bit off today. Just been battling a bit of a cold the last couple of days, nothing too major, but yeah, my voice might sound a little bit weird and hopefully I'm not too sniffly. Uh, so if there's a if there's a break, if there's a pause for me to have some water, um, that's the main reason why. So my voice isn't 100%, but uh, what could help me and revive me is a good Supercoach week because, my God, it's been a while since I've had a good one. Uh, big Red Arrow. Mine is an intro song. Yeah, probably could use could do with an intro song. Anyone out there who's a music producer or can whip together a nice little quick minute song for the intro, uh, yeah, reach out to me and let me know if you want to help me out. Um, great to see so many people. Peanut Gallery, Sneed, Matt Sherwood, Benny G. Moister than a mud cake uh, f for this. Now I'm hungry for a mud cake. Thanks, Benny G. Appreciate that a lot. Um, Ian Johnson, have I made my trades yet? Um no, I haven't, but I will take your advice. I'm going to stop the overthinking. Uh, you know, I saw, I mentioned that on, uh, was it? I can't remember which day I made that video. But yes, hopefully I'm going to stop overthinking. Keep it simple. What I, whatever I first think is what, I, what I'm going to stick to. Um, but yes, uh, AB Collectibles, thank you so much for a very, very generous uh, super chat. $10 already, thank you. What a great way to start the stream. Uh, we will obviously get to lots of your questions today, but we'll tackle this uh, first up for sure. Um, hey, Martin, looking at trading Dylan Brown to Tamara Martin and Sean Lane to Angus. Dylan Brown leaking too much, plus you need to get Cleary back. Would you use a third boost in a row for Schiller, and who would you trade out of May and Talungi? Now, this is an interesting question, so uh, we'll obviously talk about all of these people. Uh, in terms of Dylan Brown to Tamara Martin, I mean, Tamara Martin has a good little run coming up. Uh, he's only played the one game, but should make some money. So, look, I don't hate that. Look, in terms of the deal, bra deal brags, so we'll, we'll touch on it in a little bit more detail, but I'm kind of, I'm not at necessarily saying he's an outright sell, nor am I saying he's an outright hold. I think if he's your best avenue to get a, a nice gun in your center wing or maybe to make some cash or free up cash, get to Schiller, I think, to be honest, it's completely viable to sell him because um, he was not looking good. He's not looking the best in the halves. Angus Crichton, I'm going to put it out there right now. I He's, he's fine, but I, I definitely don't need... I, don't, I wouldn't recommend rushing into Angus this week. He played 80 minutes last week, but there was no Nat Butcher. Nat Butcher is back, and I, I just want to see what happens with minutes because up until pretty much the last couple of weeks, Trent Robertson has been messing around with second or forward minutes all season long. I just wouldn't want to buy Angus and then see him all of a sudden have minutes shared with kind of Tilly. Sometimes Nat Butcher does tend to play bigger minutes, so I wouldn't necessarily rush into that trade either. In terms of using the third boost in a row, though, I think that's completely fine. And we'll talk about Schiller, of course. Um, the lowest break-in I think I've ever seen before. Uh, so I think he's definitely fine to boost for to just make some quick cash. Out of man, Talangi, it's tough. I think Talangi probably would be who I'd sell him, just because he's been dropped. And, you know, you'd have to think that if Brad Arthur has dropped him, he's not going to be coming back into the team straight away. He could maybe come in back in for Morgan Harper. Or at least with Taylor May, you know that he's going to be playing for sure in the Penrith team from next week when they come off a bye. So that's kind of my quick thoughts on your super chat, but thank you so much for that. Very generous. Manscaped, uh, yeah. I could use a no copyright song. So I actually used to have a no copyright song, but then it became copyright. And so I didn't realize after about five videos, they'd all been demonetized. And I was like, not, look, I was like, what the hell's going on here? This is a no copyright song. So that's why I've since then just put zero music into the little intro. But yes, thanks again. Oh, someone's gifted 10 memberships. Alex Palmer, 07. Thank you so much. Last week it was Alex Palmer and Alex Ruffany. Um, yeah, lots of lots of generosity happening already. We we love it. We love it. All right, so we've already talked. We've already covered a few of the hot topics in the last in the first couple of minutes because of that super chat. So guys, thank you. Uh, you should say a big thanks to AB Collectibles. You can no, don't turn off the stream, please. I will. I would like you guys to stay around. <laughs> um, Although if you see my rank, you might want to just turn off and think, why am I in the hell am I listening to a guy who's got a rank of 59k? You know what? It's not even 59k. It's 60k. We're 64 spots away from 60k. Last week was an absolute dumpster fire. Dom Young, minus 15, compounded by Liam Henry, minus 1. 
people who had Liam Henry on the bench didn't get him as an AE because negative AE scores don't count, which I think is complete BS. Like, get your lowest score. Like, it's annoying. But yeah, so I had two players go negative. What else happened? I got Pappy instead of Ponga, so 60-point swing there. Captain Val Holmes, which is fine. He ended up scoring 93. I didn't play Ethan Strange. Played Talangi over him, which is probably stupid in hindsight, but lost out on points there. Anyway, it was a crappy, crappy week for myself. So... All I'm going to say to myself is that the uh, the comeback story is starting for now. Although I said that last week, and I dropped 15k. So, <laughs> who knows what's going to happen uh, as we get into this week. But, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I'm sure a lot of people out there are hurting. But yes, early season. Aman's nose. Don't worry, it's early in the season. You've got to be joking. Last week, there was Aman's hair. Aman's eye. Now, Aman's eyes have been cropped up in the chat too. This is... This is ridiculous. Um, now, Aman's nose. I will. I will say I do have a pretty big, uh, pretty big schnoz. Um, I will, I'm, not, I'm not even going to give you the side angle just because it's too big. Uh, but yes, uh, great usernames in the chat already. Uh, Professor Aman, where do I download the lecture slides? Um, yeah, maybe I should just start putting out these slides. Or, may, or maybe is that um, is that proprietary information? Maybe I'm not sure. Anyway, we're rambling here, rambling along here. A uh, quick update on the league as well. Shout out to Anthony, best of the best. Very fitting username, given that you're ranked 49th. Um, sitting top of the Amar Talks NRL Supercoach League, which the code is 637281. Um, should be getting a range that $100 voucher from Swish very, very shortly. So do join the league. Um, the first set of kind of prizes will probably be round 13. Uh, we'll probably do a few giveaways then, and we'll drop in a few other things um, as well. I've still got an idea in mind as what I'll do for the final winner at the end of the season. Haven't confirmed, but um, could be something nice. So yeah, get uh, get joining. Um, surely it ain't the same person with different accounts. That's what it looks to be, um, Akon, just based on the uh, nature of the screenshots and usernames. Aman's eyebrow. I'm not sure if I want Aman's eyebrow. Look, I'll advocate Aman's hair. That's fine. I'll, I'm happy to do. I'm, I'm happy to have an Aman's beard. I'm pretty happy with you know my beard. It's not patchy really at all. So happy for that to be emphasized in a username. The eye, I'm not so sure about. That seems a bit weird. The nose, oh, I don't love it. Yeah, hair and beard, are, hair and beard are fine. Um, but yes, anyway, join the league if you haven't already. Uh, quick wrap up of TLT for today. We'll get we'll get us started. So obviously a few of the big hot topics. Joe Martin named at fullback, which not a surprise. I think a lot of people were um, <clears throat> expecting that, uh, so nothing really too surprising there. I think I think the question with um, no super gun, no, we can't have that. We can't have that undisclosed. Uh, Manu fullback. I think the big question is how long is Teddy going to be out for? But I will say Manu. Look, if you're looking to buy him this week, obviously we know at fullback. I haven't even pulled the stats for it for this stream, but traditionally when he's at fullback, he's a different animal, and he's already been averaging 76 this season. Knights, I think, is a matchup is fine. And the benefit with him is that the Roosters play the first two major bye weeks, I think round 13, 16. If you expect Teddy to be away for Origin, you're going to have Manu in very crucial weeks as well. So I think longer term, I see a good play with Manu. Um, and he's just a super coach gun in general. So like him at fullback for sure. My big concern with Angus that I mentioned with that super chat. So Satili Tupanur is benched. Nat Butcher and Angus have been named to start. The issue I see here is, again, I don't have confidence in Angus playing full 80 minutes. It happened last week when there was injuries. Satili Tupinor played in the centres. I just think with Angus, I'm happy to wait one more week. Just if we get another game where he plays, the, the role is full 80 minutes. It's Nat Butcher who shares minutes with Satili. All aboard Angus, because you know he's a historic super coach gun. Personally, myself, I just don't have the confidence to jump in straight away and just take that risk. Um... Dylan Lucas has been named to start, um, so Tyson Frizzell obviously does have a hamstring injury, which I haven't got the screenshot up here, but Barry Tui, who's a very good account to follow for Newcastle Knights news, you've got, um, or basically he said that he thinks Frizzell is going to be a couple more, so it sounds as though Dylan Lucas might get at least two more games where he's playing the starting um, starting 80 minutes, which is great. Um, after that, though, not so confident into what it could be. Obviously, Frizzell could be out for a bit longer, and Dylan Lucas could just retain his spot. But again, with him, he feels like he could be one you trade in who maybe you need to trade back out again. So that's kind of my concerns with him. Uh, Joe Chan has been named 18th man. It looks though like he's kind of just lost his spot now, to be honest. So um, I think, yeah, Joe Chan's probably just a bit of a dead spot in our teams. Um, thank you so much, Steezers. $5 donation. Can always count on demand for good spreadsheets. Thank you. Stats. 
yes, and making us feel good about our Supercoach scores. That's a backhanded, uh, ins- oh, it's not backhanded compliment, what's the word? Is that a, is that a little sledge I can sense there? Because I make you all feel good about your Supercoach scores because mine suck. You know what? If I'm adding value to all to you all, I'll take it. If it means my Supercoach ranks suck, but you still get value out of my stuff, then fine with me. Um, but yes, no, appreciate it. Thank you so much, Teaser, for the $5 donation. That will fund my coffee tomorrow morning. Thank you very Coffee plus more. Thank you. Very much appreciate that. Um, but yeah, Reese Walsh is back for the Brisbane Broncos. That's obviously big because uh, Adam Reynolds hasn't been named either. So Walsh, you know, people looking to sell Teddy, Latrell. You already got a factor in Ponga, Turbo, Drinky. But Reese Walsh could be a pod, you know, goal kicking potentially as well. And Xavier Willison, who was popular or looking to be popular in trading last week, um, he's been named on the bench again. Uh, ben Trevojevic named at, in the centres with Ruben Garrick out this week due to the concussion. The biggest news probably of the day was Blaise Talangi dropped, as well as Mike Acevo. Um, shout out to the SE Whisperer, who has got so many players uh, not playing in this team this week. It's a bit of, bit, a, bit of a tragedy. Um, he's just looking at his bench. But yeah, Blaise Talangi obviously is a big blow. Um, we did actually flag last week that maybe there's some job concern risks, but I don't think we expected such a bad performance from the Eels last week. Um, Tom Chester has been named in the centres for the Cowboys. He looks to have first crack at a long-term spot there with um, Zach Laybutt out for the rest of the season with an ACL. Again, not one I'm happy willing to rush into. He's 363k um, from memory. I'm just going to have a quick look if he's actually played any games so far. He's only played the one game where he scored 40 in 73 minutes. Um, happy to wait. Just because there is Vilea there, I think, is potential competition. Uh, then you've also got um, Kale Iro, big one, has been named again. Britton Nukura has been named to start back from suspension. And I think Talakai has been named on the bench. Again, Iro is only playing his second game, so we don't need to jump this week. I'd be very much wanting to see what happens with t- final team lists. And Talakai has been doing very well for the Sharks at centres. It's a bit surprising that they would just relegate him to the bench, but it remains to be seen what happens. Iro, I would not be jumping on this week. Um, Damien Cook named 18th man for the Rabbitohs, who obviously don't have the troll. Just look like a great team to target at the moment. Um, and then I guess on the cheapies in Canberra, so probably a couple of things to mention here. We've got um, Schiller, who's obviously been named, who's the most traded in player by far this week. Um, so there was a tweet that said Albert Hopwadi could be, would be another week away return, from returning, according to News Call. So suggests that if things are as per, um, Schiller would drop out for Hopwati next week. But part of me thinks Hopwati has played fullback before. Rapana is out for six to eight weeks. Does Hopwati maybe move to fullback? Or does Xavier Savage move to fullback next week? So I think at the worst case, Schiller, if you only get one week out of him, he's probably almost still worth a trade-in because if you look at the Supercoach website, so with a negative 117 break even versing the Titans this week, which is obviously the matchup we want to target, if he scores 51 points, which is his projected, he'll make 142k. You could be making over close to 150k from one trade in this week. And we always say you want to make about 100k worth of cash um, with one trade. I still think he's probably worth a gamble just to get in this week. Um, especially people looking to sell like Dom Young, like myself. Maybe if our people are looking to move off Taylor May. Maybe people buy duels, you know, dual bags, for example. There is a risk. I think maybe he could have a, sh- a short shelf life, but... Look, one week, he could make so much cash. Xavier Savage could always move up to fullback next week. I think it's fine to take the gamble and then hope that he gets another run. If not, you are pocketing at least 140k. Uh, AB Collectibles, thank you so much for another Super Chat, $5. Thought it was worth another Super Chat to let you know I scored 987 in draft with 13 players, which included Dom Young, and moved up to 12k in Classic. If it wasn't for the Super Chat, I'd tell you to get out of here, AB Collectibles. What a flex. 987 in draft with only 13 players. I had 17. And I scored 9.36. To be fair, though, my no, I will say thank you so much, Collectibles, for that super chat. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm I partly joke. I do, I, I do find all the slander quite uh, not slander. I know you, I know you're joking, but the little uh, the little playful sledges. Um, all for it. It's all it's all fun banter. My draft team killed it though this week. So I think I should just become a draft expert because my draft team. Let me read out who scored well for me last week in my draft team. Eli Katoa, 110. Jerome Hughes, 108. Val Holmes, 93. Matt Tumiko, 124. My draft team killed it last week. But uh, my classic, which I'm supposed to be the expert in, is sucking. So, uh, But thank you so much, uh, AB Collectibles. Very, very generous. Other big cheapy watch, of course, is uh, Chevy Stewart. 
um, has been named to start at fullback. He hasn't played any games so far this season. So again, one that you just want to wait on. And I would like to see what happens with Hopwadi if he is available next week. Does he maybe go to fullback? Does he maybe push Savage to the fullback? Because Chevy Stewart was one that we had a lot in the preseason. But then uh, Ricky Stewart basically decided he wasn't ready yet. So now he's decided he's ready. So, you know, Seb Chris has also played fullback, as um, Nick is mentioning in the chat. So, I mean, goes without saying, I think the guys who don't change in price this week, Iro, Chevy Stewart, absolutely no need to rush them in this week, in my opinion. But Schiller, I think, is still probably worth that trade in, just with that such a negative break even. And he is versing the Titans this week. Like, he's a genuine player in your teams this week. Defending is not maybe his strong suit, but he's good in attack as well. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a TLT summary. Hopefully you all found use out of that. Uh, Gowie, three dollars donation. Thank you so much. You guys have been very, very generous. I very much appreciate it. Should I do Brooks and Lusick to Hines and Grant? Yes. Lusick to Grant is fantastic. Brooks to Hines. Hines versus the Rabbitohs this week who are looking poor. Yeah. That, you must have a lot of money in the bank, Gowie. But no, those are really, really strong trades. Um, Aman, why don't you buy all the players you have in your draft team? Yeah, I probably should. I might be doing that. You know, one of those players I mentioned, I could be buying this week. Um, but yeah, so Shilla, negative 117 break even. I think, look, I know there's risk with him potentially maybe dropping out in one more week, but look, he he's going to make more money than Talangi did last week, and he's dropped out one week, so can't be any worse than Blaze Talangi. So Shilla to me seems fine. Mike can almost not go to work with all of these super chats. No, I think my boss will want me to still come back to work tomorrow, that's for sure. Um, I mentioned this last week in terms of teams to target. So again, this has been updated now. We've got six we've got five weeks now of information on, you know, teams and how do they concede points and all of that good stuff. So last week I'd kind of noted down who are the teams that I'd be targeting for this, you know, super coach point scoring. Titans still sit clear. Um they've act- actually, you know what? The Rabbitohs have now considered the most 80-point scores so far this year with 15. Just behind them is the Titans at 14. Then you do have Parramatta, which is interesting because, you know, Parramatta, obviously a team that a lot of us invest in, but as an opponent, perfectly fine, I think, to be versing. We know that they can concede points. We saw that last week. Then you've also got the Dragons in there, and then you've also got the Bulldogs in double digits. So these kind of teams I think I'd be targeting. Other teams, like I've got here, the only other team I've got here that isn't in double digits for that over 80 points is the Dolphins. So they've got, um, let me have a quick look at it here. They've only had seven scores over 80 put against them. But I still feel like they're a team that you can target just because they've had a very easy start to the season. They've been versing lesser opponents who typically wouldn't have as many good super coach players. I think when they start coming against tougher opposition, they may be a little bit more leaky. So I think Dolphins, I'm still personally looking at as a team that you can target. Um, Cowboys, I'd say similar boat. Like, even though they've only conceded five scores over 80, they've also had a pretty easy run to start with. So I'd, put, I'd probably put those two in a tier below the likes of the Titans, the Dragons, the Rabbitohs, and maybe the Bulldogs. You know, Parramatta Cowboys, I'd probably be putting them in a in a tier below. But just useful to note when you're looking at teams that you would target. You know, West Tigers, for example, I know my color scheming, I've got them as like a, a shade of green, which, which suggests an easy matchup, but they've actually performed pretty well from a defensive point of view, super coach points wise only conceding four scores over 80 uh, in the opening five rounds. So just something to be mindful of, because at the end of the day, obviously, we're mostly interested in Supercoach points. So I'll kind of refer to this target list like I did last week when looking at um, certain players and the matchups, who's got the best runs, because I think there's a question I can already see in the chat here from uh, SE Camel, who's got the easiest run in the next five weeks? We can, we can certainly look at that. So I've got a best draw next six weeks uh, chart. Based on my scoring, and so I've actually amended my rating. So probably what's more important is not necessarily the coloring. It's actually more the actual order because I've done mine based on, I've kind of like what you have with power rankings in NFL. I've kind of changed power rankings for teams and that's very aligned to Supercoach points conceded. So over the next six, I've got the Cowboys and that's just mainly because of Parramatta and then they've got Dolphins, Titans and Rabbitohs. So four of the next six, they've got four of those teams that I would consider on my target list. Then you've got Melbourne, who I think have three. They've got Bulldogs, Rabbitohs, and then Titans, which is actually three in the next four. So probably in the next four weeks, I think Melbourne and I think the Sharks had the best run. If you're looking at the next five to six, Cowboys come out a little bit on top because they've got the round nine to 11 good run. Melbourne have a really good stretch. The Knights, you know, people looking at Ponga or Kaipis Paul still, for example. Um, Manly are in here as well. So I think we're starting to see a little bit of 
teams who we would like to purchase players from, like some of the better teams, are starting to come into some better runs as well. Because beginning of the season, they were, a lot of them were versing each other. Now you've got like Cowboys with a good run, um, although they've had a good run to start off with. Melbourne is a big one. They had a very tough start to begin with. But now you look at the likes of uh, Ellie Katoa, Jerome Hughes, Pappy, Harry Grant, maybe even a Munster, all options that you can um, consider. So hopefully that answered your question, SC Camel, about who's got the easiest run in the next five weeks. Based on my assessment, I would say next five, probably Melbourne on top. Then I'd probably say the Sharks and then maybe the Cowboys would probably be my three. And then I'd maybe follow that up with Manly. So again, very happy as a someone who held Turbo. This week's obviously not the easiest, but after that, um, it's a little bit tougher, uh, a little bit easier. Uh, the reason for the Warriors, so the good point here from Cuz. Uh, so the thing with Warriors, I think in terms of the rating, is that they've got Sydney and Penrith featuring to the top in the next six weeks. You make a good point, though, in terms of the next four. They probably would be up in that top five, I'd say, as well, with Dragons and Titans um, in round seven and round eight, especially the Titans at home. That could be a really, really good um, matchup. So, yeah, Warriors definitely feature as well for the next four. If people are looking for an SJ pod, maybe a DWZ. I know people have also maybe looked at CNK. The only issue I have with CNK is just that he's only available at fullback. I'd rather try to get someone who's not in fullback because you can target so many other good teams. And but you still have SJ Jackson Ford, RTS DWZ, a lot of these guys that you can um, consider. Um, he doesn't like the Warriors, so won't say no. Cut, no, I I love the Warriors. That they are they are in really really good form. Um, it was just an oversight of when I was first looking down the list. But no, Warriors are playing really really good. The thing with them, they're probably looking so good that they are maybe a little bit more matchup proof as well. But yeah, they're definitely a team that you can look to invest in as well. Next four is really good does toughen up though with the Roosters and Penrith um, just after that. Um, okay, so one of the topics, I know people are looking at you know specific players, but this is maybe more of a broader point before we start diving into the actual players and things. Um, are Eels on the bye week nine? Uh, yes, they are. Have I got that in there? Oh uh, yeah, sorry, that's a bit of a colouring mishap. Yeah, that should, be, that should be basically a bye. Yeah, that should actually be a black cell. Yep. Uh, same with the Dragons in round 11 actually. Must have been some conditional formatting um, error on my part. But yeah, I think something that a lot of people are looking to do this week is sell the likes of Dom Young, sell the likes of Dillbags, and because they've got the duels, they can get a center wing or then get a second row forward if they're selling um, a front row forward, flipping Josh Curran up to front row forward. So I pulled some stats together about, you know, if you're looking to spend money in your second row forward or center wing, and this was a shout out to someone from Twitter who posted this question. I thought it was a pretty good one to um, highlight. Uh, so I looked at the top 15 averaging players, and I looked at average just because some players have obviously had buys and things. So I wanted to feature averaging players to see when they're on the park, who scores best. So it's the top 15 center wings and second row forwards so far this season. So it doesn't include someone like, um, you know, fullbacks, no fullbacks. So you're looking at top 15 center wing and second row forwards um, averaging so far, and then I've looked at what's their average, and then also how many times will they come up against those target teams that I mentioned. What you obviously know from, or what you can see from here, is that the center wings is a fairly even split in the top 15. Um, also, I probably should caveat, I didn't include all players like, you know, James Schiller, for example, he's only played the two games, kind of took people who had played at least three games. So, no surprises that the center wings come out more on top for higher averages. So you've got the top five all being centers. Um, Haval Holmes, Tabai Fado, Mulatalo, Lomax, and Joey Manu. Azeo is the top second row forward at 76.2. Um, then you do get a few more second row forwards in there like Jackson Ford, Eli Katoa, Olukawatu, um, Hopgood, Hosking is in there as well, obviously for his early season efforts. But I think what it shows is that s there's a pretty even split of second row forwards and center wings who are averaging very well, but it's all the higher end is all center wings. It's all the backs who are scoring the best. And I don't have any specific stats here about, you know, how many times they've scored over 100, but I'd be willing to bet that there are more 100-plus point scores out of the centers than there are the second row forwards. This is probably all pretty obvious to a lot of you out there. There's probably nothing uh, groundbreaking. Um, but I just wanted to... I think it's good to just actually see it on, on the page because um, I think people like myself are looking at second row forwards like Eli Katoa this week. Um, but then I was thinking, is it actually better for me to go Katoa or maybe do you spend big and go like a Manu instead? So I think my general advice is if your your team makeup has a lot of safe, you know, 
scorers in the 50s, 60s, but you're looking to bring in a guy who's got big 100 plus point scores in him, then you definitely need to go for a center wing. If you've got a lot of those, if you already own like a Val Holmes and a, a Manu already, I know some people already have that, then maybe you can actually look to bolster up your second row forward. Because we're seeing a lot the likes of Sean Lane not performing very well. Josh Curran might be moved to front row forward for a lot of people as Ben, <laughs> great username. Um, I'm not going to say the full thing. Ben says Curran is finally duels. Curran up to front row forward. Uh, means you can bring in a nice second row forward this week. But again, I think for chasing the upside, it's got to be the center wings. And as we kind of said before, I think a lot of the better teams have got better runs now coming up, which again makes me think it's going to keep being the center wings who are going to keep having the big scores. So that's just some general thoughts on, you know, if I was to prioritize as center wing or second row forward, uh, center wing would be where I'd be looking to spend my money. But of course, it's team dependent. Like if you've got a struggling second row forward, then for sure, the likes of Eli Katoa, Jackson Four look really tempting um, this week. So hopefully some useful um, little stats for people. Um, Josh, hey, what advice would you give someone who can only field 16 with Satili counting? Um, I think there's a button on the app, which is um, the delete button. I think, I think, Josh, that might work best for you. Uh, no, I'm joking. I think you've got to rip your fourth boost in a row, Josh. I think that's what you're planning to do. Sounds like what you've got to do. Uh, but yeah, condolences for that. That's a, that's a travesty. Uh, very unfortunate. Uh, heard NRL 360 are nervous about the TV ratings after Oman decided to compete with them for the 7 to 7.30 time slot. Mate, if I'm competing with NRL 360, I'll take it. I mean, I have 293 viewers, which I will, I will admit is quite ludicrous. Um, still pinch myself every time I see that. Very, very big number. Um, so thank you. Thank you to all. Uh, all right. Should we start with second row forward or center wing? I'm seeing more center... I'm actually seeing more second row forward questions right now in the chat. So I'm going to talk about second row forwards first so people are asking is Olukwatu a good buy Aman with many question marks from Max um, Jay is asking Katoa or Olukwatu some oh sorry Ben you've just said center wing uh, sorry I'm going to just I'm going to make an executive decision to talk about second row forwards first <laughs> um, maybe selfishly because I'm also looking at second row forward uh, as well so okay it's a bit of a mixed bag you know what I should have done I probably should have just made a poll but We'll do second or forward. We'll do the center wing next. Don't don't worry at all. I think we'll do second or forward. We'll do center wing. And then we'll do dual bags if he's a sell or not. How about that? Sounds like a plan? Cool. All right. So second or forwards, who are the people you're looking to trade in? I've kind of broken it down into a few different uh, price points. Sorry, Hamish. We'll get to center wing. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. So in terms of the second or forwards, we've got the, the more expensive guys. So Fafida, Isaiah Yo, Olukwatu, Elikatoa, Jackson Ford. I've actually thrown, not their stats, but a couple of sneaky shouts as well. Um, Britton Nicara. So we talked about the Sharks run. The next four weeks is looking good. I think he's probably someone who, because he's just been out for two weeks and the Sharks have had a bye, I don't think anyone is looking at Britton Nicara. But we know that he's got those attacking stats in him. It's a good run coming up. Um, I like Nicara as a bit of a pod shout. So I know the popular buys are going to be Katoa, Olukwatu, and Jackson Ford. But again, anyone who's really you know hunting for a pod, I really like a Brit Nicker potentially uh, as a buy, just to go against the grain. And we know that he's got that attacking upside um, in him as well. He's just been out for the last three weeks, so I feel like no one is really talking about him. But I think the big ones, Olukwatu, Katoa, Jackson Ford. Isaiah Yeo has been killing it all season, but he's on the buy this week. And he's he's more expensive than those other three. He just doesn't feel the most um, I don't know, sexy. Is that the right word? He's just very meat and potatoes. It's good meat and potatoes. He's, he's good, well-seasoned, well seasoned well herbed meat uh, potatoes and wagyu meat but it's still meat and potatoes so Azeo on the buy this week I don't think is a consideration out of Olukwatu, Katoa and Ford so I think what I had before just going to quickly flick back I think I had Eli Katoa in the next up until State of Origin so up until round 13 um, he's got four games against this quote unquote target list Jackson Ford has got three um, Olukwatu has got three um, as well. So in terms of the draw, they all do have good runs. Elikato on paper has got the best. If you look at the extra, um, <clears throat> the extra game he's got against one of these target opposition, really great matchup. The next four weeks is the best for Katoa though. Bulldogs, Roosters, and then it's uh, Rabbitohs, and then the Titans. Um, does have the buy in round thirteen though, and someone makes a good point here from Adam, um, which is to you know it, it is probably worth spending time to think about. Uh, state of origin who are the guys that you want to play um, in round 13 so 
funnily enough, out of um, all of Olaquatu, Jackson, Ford, and Katoa, none of them play round 13. So none of them are going to help you from that point of view. Fafita will likely play Origin, Azayo will play Origin. So none of these guys are actually going to help you for that. So I think for that particular discussion, you don't need to worry about Origin. You're probably just wanting to go pick the guy who's got the best point potential. Last week, I said Jackson Ford over Eli Katoa. And that was because I thought the run was a little bit better. He had a better matchup last week, I think, than Katoa did. And he also was cheaper. So this week, he's outpaced him for price. He's 10k more expensive now than Katoa. Um, <clears throat> in terms of work rate, Jackson Ford is a little bit better. He's got a 0.73 base power PPM. Katoa, 0.7. Jackson Ford has been getting attacking stats in almost every game. Uh, Katoa obviously scored big last week with two um, tries. He hasn't got attacking stats in every game. I think if you ask majority of people, they would probably tell you Katoa just because you just look at the player and he's the one who you'd say is more likely going to get attacking stats more often. Jackson Ford probably is one who you'd think is more of the plotter, meat and potatoes, but funnily enough, he's actually benefiting a lot from uh, attacking stats. If I had to guess, oh, not a guess, but if I had to pick one of the two now this week, um, it probably feels a little bit like chasing points with Katoa, but I probably would prefer Katoa. Um, I think he's just got that one extra matchup against a bottom opposition that you really want to target. Um, like the Warriors do have... I mean, they both have the Titans coming up very soon. But I think the home games are better. I think I think for Katoa, Bulldogs and Rabbitohs, compared to, say, in the next three, you've got um, Parramatta. Uh, sorry, you've got um, you've got Manly and Titans. Well, actually, Titans at home is very good. Uh, I think with Jackson Ford, it does toughen up a little bit when you get to, say, round 9, round 10. Whereas with Katoa, you look at that run, you don't really see any games where you're really concerned about him. And Melbourne, you probably, as a team, maybe this is harsh to the Warriors because they've been killing it. You'd probably slightly prefer Melbourne, I think, as a team, you'd think, to get it done. And I really like Jerome Hughes is killing it. And I think the partnership between him and Eli Katoa has been really good um, as well. So I think I would probably now slightly lean Eli Katoa. I think while Jackson Ford has been getting a lot of attacking stats, and he did go 100 plus last week. Oh no, he didn't go 100 plus last week. But I think Katoa, we've seen historically from him when he's played good minutes, he's been someone who, like last year, I think in his uninjured games, he averaged like 76. He's currently averaging 74. You can see that being much more sustainable. Ford, you just there's probably something in the back of your mind that makes you think it might not be as sustainable. It could happen in the next little run, but with Katoa, I think we've seen probably a little bit more evidence that he can do it. So now I'm probably changing my view from last week, which I think is that uh, you've got, I think I've got Katoa slightly above Jackson Ford. In terms of Olukowatu, so is Olukowatu a good buy was one question. Yes, he absolutely is a good buy. He's been consistent all season long, averaging 74. Um, his run probably not as good, but he does have the Titans before either of these two. Um Olukwatu is probably likely going to be playing Origin. So, or not likely, but he's a good shout of playing Origin too. So I think that's probably one thing if you are spending up a lot of money and you are looking at this second or four that you're buying this week as a lock-in uh, for rest of the season type, you know with Eli Katoa, he, he's, a, uh, he's not going to be playing State of Origin, so you've got that kind of comfort. Um, he also plays round 16. He doesn't play round 13 or round 19 though. So you're only going to get him for that middle, um, uh, middle uh, uh, buy game. If you look at Manly instead, well, it doesn't really matter with Olukwatu. If he plays Origin, he's going to miss out anyway. Um, Jackson Ford does play also round uh, 16. So I think with Olukwatu, mm, like he was very solid last week. He scored, he's probably been the most consistent. Well, actually, I don't think he's been the most consistent. Ford has been the most consistent. But 76, 94, 48, 54, and 97. When he's had easy games, he's scored well. Like 94 against the Dragons, 97 against the Rabbitohs, even the 76 against Penrith. Um, so I think Olukwatu is a good good option. I think people are probably maybe thinking a bit more pod Eli Katoa and maybe a little bit more attacking stats in him. It's a very it's very tough to rank the three of them. But yeah, I think for the fact that you probably going to get Katoa for all of the origin period, and I think Melbourne's run is a little bit better, I would probably say I'm going to rank Katoa number one. Olukwatu number two, and then I think Ford number three. But these are all like very, very kind of very, very close rankings. I can't, I'm not necessarily saying one is bad, one's not. It's very close. Um, you just kind of have to go, I guess, with your gut and your eye test. Uh, my eye test has been telling me that Ford has looked really good, but so has Olukwatu. Cherry Evans is killed it last week against Penrith. We know that when Cherry Evans is on, it means Olukwatu will profit. 
Um, but we, I think Jerome Hughes has probably performed the best out of those kind of, you know, looking at, say, maybe SJ or uh, Cherry Evans. And I think Hughes will step up during Origin period and he will rely a lot on Eli Katoa. So I like Eli Katoa. I think probably just number one. In terms of Fafida, so Tyler's asking, dual bags to Fafida. I mean, look, I can't knock Fafida as a trade-in. The only issue is that you're paying an extra like 140k compared to these other three. Fafida is the best. Like he's been averaging 69 in his first two games, 76 last week, which included a line break, but 66 pretty much in work rate. Got a very good base power PPM, 0.87. It's only just behind Zayo. He's got a high break even. Um, in terms of a run, it's not the easiest. We know Fafida doesn't necessarily need a good run to score well. I just think personally, um, I, I don't really subscribe to the thinking that because the Titans are so bad, that means Fafita is going to be poor as well. I think we've seen enough from him. But I think I would, in this situation, I'd just take the money saving and go get someone like uh, Olaquad to Katoa or Ford and uh, save the money and not go for Fafita personally. Fafita will play Origin as well, so that's probably something you can also um, hold against him. That's my kind of thoughts on those more expensive secondary forwards. On the cheaper ones, so you've got Kai Piss Paul, Angus Crichton, Sean Bloor. Uh, you can throw someone like maybe an IPAP in there who's around the 500Ks and maybe even a Josh Curran. On Curran now, I think with him being available at front row forward, that's definitely the place I think you want to put him. So I wouldn't necessarily be buying him a second row forward. If you buy him a second row forward with the view to move him eventually to front row forward, perfectly fine. I think he's a decent option. He does have a buyer coming up soon though. So I think maybe after round nine, you could wait with Curran. But I think of these cheaper options... I've kind of voiced my concerns already on Angus Crichton. I just want to see one more week with minutes. I know he's got a relatively good break even of 24, but even if he scores like, say, 60, he might go up in price to like 440, 450. He's still going to be at a very good price um, to go get him. In terms of Sean Bloor, someone was asking about, can you run both Katoa and Sean Bloor? I think that's actually reasonable because we've seen how good the run is for Melbourne. Um, on Bloor, I don't think he played the full... 80 minutes, but he had a pretty good work rate, I think, in that time. Yeah, so he played 64 minutes last week, and he based 41. He scored 63 points in that time. So there were some attacking stats in there. Um, like, I would, again, this is one where I probably ideally would like to wait a week just to see if the role is cemented for him in that kind of 60, mid-60s plus minute, um, because we know Joe Chan has been named 18th man, and I'm still not fully convinced that, like, Bloor feels like someone to me who can still get those kind of low scores in him uh you know if you think about Trent Liero last year for playing that same spot for Melbourne I just don't think it's a position that generally they use a lot for Supercoach point of view Eli Katoa we know gets used a lot by Jerome Hughes so like if you're buying one of the two I would probably actually lean Angus out of just those two but again I'm not that convinced on buying either of the two I think if you're looking to buy one around this price I still think it's Kai Pierce Paul I know he only scored 50 last week, but in terms of his role, that looks to be pretty pretty secure now. It looks like he's going to be an 80-minute back rower, and it's a really good run for Newcastle coming up. So Roosters at home this week is not even as tough as it looks. No Teddy, no Sam Walker, so I think they're going to be under strength. Um, Pierce Paul has played 80 minutes the last four weeks. Then after that, you're looking at Bulldogs, Dolphins, Warriors, West Tigers, Titans before the bye, and then the Bulldogs again. He plays round 13 as well, um, which... Angus does, but Piers Paul is an Englishman. He's not playing State of Origin. So you can even look at it as he will play round 13 for you as well. So I think Kai Piers Paul is still actually my preferred of this 400k range. With IPAP, he just feels like he's... I feel like you can get similar out of Piers Paul for a cheaper price. So I know IPAP's been solid, but again, feels like he maybe hasn't quite got that ceiling. Maybe, like, if you're looking to pay for IPAP, I'd actually prefer to spend up a little bit more, get the likes of a Katoa, or go with this 400k guy. Third th thoughts on Josh Kerr. So I've been actually quite a fan of Josh Kerr so far this season. I uh, just never end up getting him because I just had other issues to fight in my team. But he looks like he's a pretty safe bet to get at you about 50 each week. He has got a tacky set potential in him. Um, 450k. Um, so I think he'll kind of now at his price, he'll offer a little bit of value, but he won't be a, a cash cow. He'll just be probably a handy player to have in your team who can score between 45 to 50 and, um, you know, has got dual. But at his price, if we get confirmation that Angus is a full 80-minute back rower, I'd much prefer him, I think, to Josh Kerr. So again, this is one of the things where I'm thinking maybe it's safe to wait a week if you can. If you're looking to buy a second row forward this week, maybe just pay out big for one of these um, top-range guys. So Robin, you asked a question, go from Dom Young to a second row forward or go to Manu. 
So the section I had before this was about where would you spend your money? Would it be in the center wing, second or forward? Basically made the assessment that they're pretty even in terms of how many center wings and second or forwards are averaging well. But in terms of who is on the top end, it's the center wing. And I think Manu playing at fullback will cover the first, he'll cover round 13 and round 16. I think Manu is who I'd be prioritizing um, out of um, him or a second or forward. Unless obviously your team is really weak in the second or forward, then definitely go by second or forward. Um, thoughts on uh, in terms of the second or forward is Sean Lane a sell this comes from Tool Pro um, look I think Sean Lane is perfectly fine to move on I'm probably going to be holding just because I think I've got bigger issues in my team and again I'm looking at Cowboys Dolphins the next two weeks he's 467k 42 break even he's not going to massively lose in price so it does feel like it's somewhat sideways of a move even if it's to go to someone like a Piers Paul I'm kind of happy to wait the next two weeks and then even give him round eight, and then maybe round nine when he does have a buy, and then he's got Broncos, Melbourne, Rabbitohs. At that point, maybe it is to, maybe it's time to move off on him, but he does play round thirteen as well. So I'm kind of even looking at him as someone who, if I can just stash him in my second or forward, maybe I don't play him every week, play him on matchups. Maybe that's the right approach for Sean Lane. But like I can see people looking to move him on, and I think that's perfectly fine. To be honest, he's not delivering, and um, yeah, Parramatta not doing um very well. Um, so I guess that's on the second or forward. Um, Hamish Hunter before was saying boo when I said we're going to do that first. So we'll we'll go on to the centre wing now. So people who are looking at centre wings this week, obviously, is a big um, big place for people shopping. Uh, Dom Young owners, me included, uh, very heavily looking at the centre wings and wondering who's the best gun that you can uh, go for. Just having a look at the top ten trade ins as well because I think a couple of them feature here. So. Actually, I lie. The only one who is featuring here is Joey Manu. He's the second most traded in player. Um, 5,500 people have already brought him in. Um, not unexpected when he's been named at fullback. People love Joey Manu when he plays at fullback. The last time he versed Newcastle, he scored 117 points, just FYI, last year, in a bye round, actually, when he would have been playing fullback. So the last time he played fullback against the Knights, 117 points. Then the, the draw is a bit tougher with Melbourne, Dragons, Broncos, but... Manu is kind of matchup proof the way that he plays. He's got a very good work rate, as you can see here, with a base power average of 49. That's only second to Lomax, on, uh, Lomax and Dylan Lucas on this particular list. So we know he's generally safe because he gets a lot of tackle busts and things. Like his lowest score this season was 22 against Manly, but apart from that, he scored 106, 84, 63, and then 108. So you're looking at a genuine gun. Um, I can't vault the uh, Manu trade in. If you are looking for an, who is, if you ask me who is the best center wing that you can get, I still think it's Val Holmes. He is the most expensive by far, 870k. But as we highlighted before, I think in the next, the run all the way up until State of Origin, um, he's got four games against those kind of target list opposition. Paramount is one of them. Then you've got after the round seven, eight, Dolphins, Titans, Roost, uh, Rabbitohs. So really, really good matchups. So I think with Holmes, he's still my number one by far. It's a high break even this week, but we've seen Parramatta concede so many points. A game at Combank always feels like a game that has points in it as well. So I think Holmes for me is still number one. Number two for me, yes, it would probably be Manu now. Given that he does play the first two bye weeks, playing at fullback this week is good. And um, he's a very safe player who generally scores at least a 50 with his base power work rate. And he's also cheaper than a lot of these guys now. He's cheaper than Hamaso, Lomax, DWZ, and Mulatalo. So Manu is probably my number two. Um, my number three is probably Lomax now. Um, I think he's probably shown enough where it doesn't really matter what happens in the game. He's showing that, like, we always knew he could be good for Supercoach, and now he's really kind of kick-starting it this season because he's been a guy who's on the bubble of scoring a 60 average, but, like, he's got 108, a 98, and 112 so far this season intermixed with a 44 and a 51. So, like, his lowest score is 44, so he's kind of like a he's like Val Holmes light like he's a goal kicker good work rate um, has a pretty good floor and he's starting to give me Jermaine Asako vibes just the guy who people just were like nah team I mean Dolphins obviously got people by surprise last season but you know people were like oh Dolphins not that great of a team Sarko, not he's been a bit of an up and down super coach option in the past, but he's a right wing and goal he's a right winger goal kicker with a decent base. And Lomax feels like the exact same thing. 
like I can easily see Lomax being someone who just continues to average 70 plus this season. Um, and so he's expensive at 727k. But yeah, his try assist, that, as Nick says, was ridiculous. Um, averaging 53 base power. So his base power stats are unbelievable. Um, the, the draw, look, it's not the best on paper. Like, you know, even the West Tigers away is not the easiest from a scoring points point of view. But he just seems like a kind of guy who, look, he plays round 13, which is also another thing. He could be a shout for set of origin potentially, but I think he's probably my number three center wing now. You know, Holmes number one, Manu number two, probably Lomax number three. Um, I'd probably say DWZ number four, just for targeting the Warriors, really good run. Um, with Hamaso, obviously he's been very good so far, but he feels like someone who I think people probably already have bought him. They're not necessarily buying him now. I think the real test with him will be this week against the Broncos team who do have a couple of their guys back. Um, he's got a 52 break even. If he continues to still score well against the Broncos, then maybe you can look to hold because Parramatta after that in Darwin could be a game where he scores very well. Um, and then, he'll look, he'll play Origin. So you can maybe look to move move him on um, at that point. A um, few pot options. So Mulatalo, look, I saw Mulatalo last week, which I'm kind of slightly regretting just because I'm looking at the draw now thinking Rabbitohs, gee, that's a game I, really, I would really like more attacking players from the Sharks. And then you've got the Dragons. It does toughen up a little bit, though, in round 10. But if you want to target, again, the next four weeks, Mulatalo um, could be a very good option as a bit of a pod. Um, Timoko from the Raiders. So he's obviously got the best matchup this week at home to the Titans. But I've kind of, I feel like we've seen this story before with uh, with Timoko where he he kind of has these runs where he scores very well and then you people would kind of like jump on him and then he just kind of goes back to maybe his 50 kind of average. Like, for example, last season, um, there was a period where he went 75, 79, 119, 69. Fantastic. You're thinking four weeks of great scores. Get him in after that. 32, 28, 41, 36, 55, 43. It was a good few weeks before he got another 100, but then he then went 53, 43, 64, 18. Like, he just feels like a guy who's got big scores in him because he's a great, talented player. But on a consistent basis, I don't think he's someone who I'd be um, having a lot of faith in. I mean, for the exact same price almost, I'd probably just go Manu, I think, playing at fullback. And you know that Manu will play... um, round 13 and round 16. I don't necessarily think he's a panic buy. Probably not as much as maybe, say, Dom Young. I know people are giving maybe some Dom Young flashbacks here. But Manu has shown a bit more in the past to be a good supercoach gun. And especially when he's playing um, at fullback or, say, in the 5'8s. Basically when he's not playing right right center. So I can see the appeal for getting him in this week when it's a good matchup. Um, And also the fact that he covers round 13 where he'll be versing the Cowboys who will have a lot of their origin stars out. Yeah, I think Manu's a pretty good trade instilled this week. And he feels like I would have more conviction about him than I would say a Dom Young. So I think Manu still is a, a good option to be trading in this week for a Dom Young replacement. Um, but yeah, otherwise, like obviously, the only thing I'd carry out with him is that after this week, per, temporary expectations, um, because he won't be playing a fullback, but we know he can still score very well. Um, RTS, a sell? Uh, definitely not. Definitely not. There's no way I'm selling RTS when he has got Manly, Dragons, Titans, and Newcastle in his next four weeks. No way. Um, yeah, other pod shouts. So I think a couple people were mentioning Karaz. Look, I'd, I'd be happy to move on Karaz personally. Just um, He had one good score where he got um, 100 plus, but since then, uh, well, outside of that, it's been 49, 47, 36, 41. Comes into Melbourne, Newcastle, and then a buy. For me, he feels like someone who I think you can very easily move off. 643k. He's got 117 break even as well. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind moving um, Karaz on to like a, a Joey Manu, for example, if that's the kind of move that you want to do. He wouldn't be featuring in my top four center wing. Um, another person I've got here is Greg Marzu. So he hasn't been named in the 17, but he has been named on the extended bench for the Knights. The Knights do have a good run. Um, after the, Well, even this week looks good, but then it's Bulldogs, Dolphins, etc., Look, he's very expensive. He's 789k. But look, if he gets named in the team, people who are looking to go absolutely pod off the rails, you've got you've got catch a splash, Greg Marzu, just throwing it out there. You could even go someone like maybe I don't know, like Inari Tuala. Um, uh, Dylan Lucas, I kind of voiced some concerns with him. It looks as though he could be good for a couple of weeks, but then if if um if Frizzell is back, I think Lucas will go to the bench because I think Pierce Ball is the one who's going to be sticking with the 80-minute roll. So Lucas, the duel's nice. The price is good, 513k. But 
uh, I, f- I feel like there's potentially some job security risks with him coming up in, after the next couple of weeks. Um, top five Aman cut we've seen. My hair hasn't really changed that much. Um, without RTS the try, he only would have got like 40. That's right, but he was playing right wing. He was playing in a different position. So I think I'd probably, I think back at center, he's probably going to get higher base um, playing there. Um, uh, yeah, so I think we've covered all of these center wing options. I think the next big topic of the week was um, Dylan Brown. Is he a sell or what's going on with him? Do we look to run maybe cheap 5.8s, um, et cetera, et cetera. So in terms of dual bag, so like, look, I'm an owner. I probably will be holding just because I've got bigger issues. I've got Dom Young. Needs to go. I've got Spencer Lenu still. I should probably, about, it's probably about time I get rid of him as well. Um, especially when Liam Henry's on the buy this week. So I personally probably will just hold dual bags. And I'm looking at it as next two weeks, Cowboys, Dolphins. I'll probably want to keep him for that. The only reason I'm thinking of keeping dual bags is that he will leak some cash, but he could be the one who I decide to end up selling to Cleary. So I've got Luke Brooks in my halves along with Nico Hines. So Luke Brooks has got dual. I could just decide, you know what, dual bags not killing it. He's the one who I moved to Cleary and that's my get out. So I think with dual bags, like I'm definitely for selling. I'm not going to go outright and say, yes, you absolutely have to sell him because a 96 break even, if he's been averaging around 55, Look, he'll drop some cash, but he may end up around 600k. And I want to give him this Cowboys and Dolphins matchup. By the way, that round seven Dolphins matchup isn't necessarily a home match. I think it's up in Darwin, so it's pretty tough. But then by round eight, I could just move him on to Cleary. So I think with dual bags, I think the main issue is that he's just not suited to playing halfback. Again, he's got a new halves combination now with Dejan Arcee, who I think was pretty good last season for the Eels when he played. So I'm happy to give dual bags another couple of weeks before I personally reassess and maybe sell him. But people who are looking to sell, like somebody has mentioned, dual backs for Ponga. If you can do dual backs to Ponga, uh, do that trade, in my opinion. We haven't even talked about fullbacks yet, but for me, KP is still number one fullback. Really good run coming up. I think that's absolutely a good move that you can do. Uh, dual backs to Manu is probably one that a lot of people are looking to do as well. Again, you probably have to have good conviction about Manu. Um, dual bags will play round 13 as well, so that's another thing that's appealing with him. But you can always maybe buy him back in round 12. Because you could sell him before the buy in round nine. It's Broncos, Melbourne, but then he runs into Rabbitohs and then Sharks. So I, I don't mind dual bags as a sell with maybe a view to get him back. The other th- viability of selling him is that Ethan Strange, if you flip him up to your 5 8, he obviously scored very well last week, but he's got the Titans this week. He absolutely is a great play. Round seven is going to be a bit tough if you run that Strange Galvin combination because Galvin is going to have Penrith, Strange is going to have Broncos. But after that, you can run Strange or Galvin um, from that point onwards. So I don't mind even just going cheap in the 5-8 spot because you're definitely not getting value um, out of SJ. Another popular move that people were looking at was Tamara Martin. So he obviously scored 98 last week. He's got a negative break even. Um, he won't change in price this week. So maybe one that, again, you can hold off. Um, I'd be more likely to probably, if I was selling dual bags, I would probably rather use his money to buy a center wing or a second or four, then try to go and go another 5-8. So I'd probably go dual backs to Manu, dual backs to Lomax, flip up Ethan Strange, and just run that pair for a little bit. Um, Hamish makes a good point here. Dual bags could be a nice buyback or a long-term hold if by the time Moses comes back, you'd expect Mo- uh, dual bags to improve as well. But for sure, I think uh, dual bags is not offering value. I can't begrudge anyone selling him. Dual bags to Manu, I would do if you don't have any other issues. Dual backs to Holmes, I would do. I know people did that last week. I think that was actually a very uh, good move that I probably should have considered. But dual backs to Holmes is good. Dual backs to Manu is good. Dual bags to even Lomax, I can get around. Um, if you want to go real pod, maybe like DWZ, uh, I can still get behind that as well. After that, probably I'd maybe just look to hold um, dual bags at that point. Um. In terms of the other halves that you can maybe move to, so say if you've got the duels to go Brown to say Hughes or SJ, I still prefer SJ to Hughes just because of the goal kicking, but Hughes probably does have a better long-term draw. Um, SJ is also cheaper uh, as well. So look, if you're doing duels and you can do deal bags to one of those two, who you can eventually maybe move back to Cleary um, because SJ's got a really good run until round eight. Could be a nice little flip to Cleary in round nine, or Hughes has got a good run all the way until round 10. So... Um, 
yeah, I don't even mind either of the two. I still prefer SJ just because of the goal kicking. Um, playing at home this week, well, so is Jerome Hughes. But I just prefer the goal kicking that SJ has. Would I buy Tamara Martin next week? Yeah, if Tamara Martin has another big game and he's got a really, really low negative break even, and then next week he runs into the Dragons and then the Titans, I can definitely see their argument to go um, dual bags to Tamara Martin. That probably frees up the cash so that maybe then you can get Cleary back um, or maybe another gun fullback, for example. Shift to Pod makes a good point here. Do you even need Cleary when he's back or could you just go with Hines and SJ? So you definitely could. Like Hines, I think I'll just be holding um, indefinitely. Um, you could run Hughes and SJ. I think the only thing that scares me about not going Cleary is that he'll come back to West Tigers, which, look, I might not even own Cleary for West Tigers, but then it's Cowboys, uh, Rabbitohs, Bulldogs, Warriors, Sharks. There's a few games in there that I'd be very concerned about not owning Cleary, but there is validity in doing it. But I think myself personally, um, I'm kind of just tempted to go um, straight back to Cleary um, when he's when he's back uh, as well. Uh, what's my thoughts on upgrading center wing versus halfbacks, be it Hines, Cleary, SJ? I think with those three, maybe even a Hughes, I would probably look to try to go, because the halfback's not a very deep position, I would just try to lock in two guns there. Center wing, you can sometimes still get lucky, like we saw this week. If you have to cop playing a cheaper player like a Ethan Strand or a Bostock or a, a Schiller, they can still have good weeks. Um, and so you don't necessarily have to pay up. Whereas halfback, it does feel like you do need to pay up to get the good scores. Um, whereas, my God, Aiden Caesar. Look, Aiden Caesar actually been pretty sneaky good. 52, 51, and 69 in the last three weeks. Got a three break even. If anyone went him, you know, versus the Dragons this week, you've made some good money out of him. Or well, not good money, but uh, you've made 50, 60K so far. So, been a nice little option for people. Um, I've got Matt Burton here as well, but just with the draw of Melbourne, Newcastle, and then a buy, I just I know the score is very appealing from last week, but I just don't think I'd be looking to go there myself uh, personally. Uh, I don't have a hooker segment, um, Hamish, so I might just tackle that more as a general question. Apologies. Um, probably the last main one is around fullbacks, so people who are looking to sell Teddy or Latrell. I probably don't need to spend too much time in this particular section. I was pretty detailed about this last week. I think for me, uh, in terms of the number one priority, if you are selling one of the two, um, it is KP. Um, he's got a three-round average of like 106, 107, I want to say. 33 break-even. He's pretty much back to his original starting price. I don't own, which is very sad. Selling him is probably one of the worst trades I may have ever done for Supercoach. Um, at home to a weekend Roosters team, then Bulldogs, Dolphins, Warriors, Tigers, Titans. Like That's a run that I'd be very scared not owning. Um KP. So he's definitely the one who I would be um, prioritizing as a number one target for fullback. Number two, if I had to rank number two, see Dylan Edwards would have maybe featured there, but now I think the time has passed because Cleary will come back. He'll take over the goal kicking, command a little bit more of the ball. But like Dylan Edwards' stats have been really, really good, like a 90 average. But like, yeah, since when did Dylan Ed Edwards become 832k? But it is what it is. So in terms of the number two, I think it would be between the four of Turbo, Drinky, Walsh, or Pappy. I think short term, it would be uh, Turbo, just because he's got Warriors, but then he's got the Titans in round seven. So I think short term, it's probably going to be Turbo. I think long term, though, it would be Drinkwater. So he's obviously very expensive at 891k, but as we highlighted before with Val Holmes, um, a very very strong run coming up all the way through until origin so i think drink is just going to keep killing it i don't think it's necessarily even chasing points to go for drink water even though he scored really well last week we've seen paramatic concede a lot of points um uh last week um drink water not playing origin tyler's mentioned i mean drink water could potentially be um an origin player this year but if he's not he plays round 13 against a weakened Roosters team. So, like, again, there's a bit of an added bonus to him there as well. Whereas Turbo, you fully expect to play Origin. So that's why I say long-term, probably drink water. But short-term, it would probably be uh, Turbo. Reese Walsh could be nice. Does have a high break even, but he's coming against the Dolphins, Canberra, and then the Tigers. Um, he is maybe goal-kicking this week as well. But I, I still think Turbo Drinky I'd prefer. I'd pr probably even prefer Pappy, I think, to... Oh, is that, is that the right thing to say? Yeah, I, I think I would prefer Pappy to Walsh just because I think his draw is very, very good as well. And then three of the next four, I think, are very great matchups. Um, out of Drinky or Ponga, I still think for me it has to be KP. I think he's probably the number one 
Um, yeah, it's, it's very it's very sad to say all of this when I had KP and Turbo to start the season and I sold one of them and now I'm like, I don't own KP. I own Pappy, which he could be good this week, but oh God, I think I'd probably prefer um, KP. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, yeah, Drink Your Ponga, we've already mentioned that. We've already addressed that. Chans, lots of question marks. Um, the reason I haven't got Chans here in this list is this fullback position is just so stacked. I think you've got to try to get Warriors players, I think, in other positions. Just my own personal opinion. Like, he is definitely the pod route if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to go there. But I just... I, I mean, Chance had a great season last season, of course. Average 67, but... I just think this... Like, I think some of these guys are just going to outscore him, in my personal opinion. And I think with the Warriors... Like, I've mentioned this before, I think... With the Warriors, I think you can target players from other positions who are very good. RTS, uh, you can get DWZ, you can get SJ, Jackson Ford. Um, whereas when you look at these other teams, like for the Cowboys, you know, this is maybe one we- reason you could not go drink water is that if you already have Val Holmes, you can get a gun in another position. But someone like a Pappy, oh, to be fair, you can actually make the same argument with Pappy. But like Turbo, for example, by far, I think is the best manly player that you can get. I don't think CNK is the best Warriors player that you can get. So it's kind of just trying to balance, trying to target teams, but not lock yourself out of a position just because you've got CNK there. So I think he's the pod, but I think I prefer still a few of these other guys. Yeah, one concern I do have with Pappy is mentioned here is that am I concerned that he isn't entirely integral to Melbourne's attack? Uh, that's true. I thought the opening of last week's game was very encouraging, but then he kind of drifted away uh, for the rest, for the remainder of the game. But he's kind of hovering. So I'm kind of just hoping there was a great article I think from is it rugby league is it rugby league eye test on Twitter something about they had a small section on Pappy about how he's just been hovering and could soon break out fingers crossed it happens um, this week but I think Pappy will do well if Melbourne are doing well um, all right we've covered second report I think what we'll do is we'll touch on captaincy and then I think we'll touch on my team and then we'll do questions and then we'll wrap up there I know the insight guys are doing their stream at eight thirty as well so. Um, We'll give you guys a bit of time uh, to get sorted for that too. So in terms of captaincy this week, I think if you're a KP owner, um, he would probably be my preferred VC just because he's playing at home um, against the Roosters who have been seventh for conceding opposition points to fullbacks, uh, points to opposition fullbacks. So matchup-wise actually seems to work for him as well. Goal kicking, we know he's been killing it recently as well. There doesn't seem to be much rain hovering around Sydney or Newcastle this week, so... Having a quick look at the uh, weather app, I can see, holy moly, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all sunny, low 20s, beautiful. Monday, yeah, well, Monday we don't care about anyway. Um, So yeah, Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all looking sunny, all should be hopefully good for point scoring. So I like Ponga as the preferred VC. Um, I'll tell you now, my preferred captain this week is Hines. Rabbitohs just look awful, um, conceding so many points, under strength this week as well. Hines coming off a bye. Rabbitohs have considered the most points to opposition halfbacks. It all kind of just stacks up for me in my head that Hines is going to be my captain. So I know he's been a little bit underwhelming so far this year, but he did score 94 against the Raiders. Um, I'm going to trust the gun here and uh, and go um, Hines. Turbo I haven't put here just because it's away against the Warriors. So I just feel like, like, I know, well, it's a bit dumb to say because Warriors have actually been conceding points to opposition fullbacks. I'm probably doing a disservice here to Tommy, um, his potential this week. Because if I'm having a look at it here, yeah, the Warriors have actually ranked fifth for conceding points to opposition fullbacks. We just saw Turbo score well against Penrith. Um, but it's just, I think it's just the away factor. I think playing away from home just feels like, for me, it's not, um, it just doesn't really feel like the best matchup. And my in my own personal team, I've got Pappenhausen. So at home to the Bulldogs, Surprising stat, they've actually been ranked 16th for conceding points to opposition fullbacks, which is like tied for tied with Canberra, and it's better than Penrith. So maybe the matchup's not that good. Um, <clears throat> one, actually, now that I've just seen it, interesting stat on Eli Katoa. So the Bulldogs have been, have ranked, are ranked first for conceding points to opposition second or forwards. So anyone looking to buy Eli Katoa this week, um, that could be very tempting for you but uh, yeah for me Heinz captain and I think VC Pappy 
If you own Ponga, VC, I think as well. If you don't own Ponga, I think Manu playing at fullback is obviously a very safe VC as well. And then I think if you don't have Hines or you don't want to go Hines, I think the Cowboys players are still very good shouts for captain. We saw Parramatta concede so many points um, <clears throat> uh, away to Parramatta at Combank. I think that's a I think that's a good matchup to target for sure for points as well. We've seen Holmes has been very solid in the past few weeks, so I think Val's safe for like a 65, 75 points plus at least in this week. But personally, I think the ceiling is with Hines and with Pappy. So my preferred combination is VC Pappy, um, Captain Hines. South need a miracle. Yeah, that's what it looks like um, at the moment, Steezers. Yep, I know Turbo got 110 versus Panthers, but I think playing at home, Cherry Evans' milestone game. Uh, is Turbo weakened without Garrick? Uh, I don't think so, because I think uh, Turbo will be Turbo will get his um, runs and everything, um, even if Gar- uh, Garrick is not there. So I wouldn't really stress about that. Para also very weak to center wing. That is a good point. Yeah, so they're ranked sixth to conceding points to opposition um, center wing. So... Definitely, the matchup could be there. Who's actually um, just gonna have a quick look at the team lists? <clears throat> who would be playing right center? Oh, it'd be Will Penasini. Who Penasini is a pretty good defender. Morgan Harper playing left center though. You could easily see the right. Oh, Drinkwater could kill it. You know, we 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 do know that Drinkwater likes playing from uh, down the right hand side. If he's running at Morgan Harper, could be some could be some points on offer there. And against Dejan Ars, he's left edge as well. Yep. I think um I think I prefer drink water to home now just just by reading that. Schiller captain, Ethan Strange captain. Uh, that like I I would like to play him this week. Uh, that to me just still feels personally a bit too a bit too my far of a step for me personally. I know they can score both very well last week, but the, the, to me, it just doesn't feel like oh, it's a team uh, or players I want to be trusting with the armband. I want to stick with the proven guns, who I think are you know some of the guys that I mentioned here um, as well. Um, I did have a slide on top base power, but we'll kind of skip over that. That was just a post that I had made on X and Instagram. Just having a quick look, see is there anything that we missed? We've kind of covered most things, which is great. So I'll quickly show you guys my team, and hopefully I get the screen right this time, because I think last time I stuffed it up there you go i think you can see my team now um 2200 in the bank also there's 333 people watching so please give the uh stream a thumbs up if you are enjoying it drinky or heinz captain uh i still think i would go heinz if i'm being honest uh no there was no front row forward slide ben um in terms of front row forward we'll, we'll address it maybe more in a direct q a but um I think Josh Curran's probably a safe one. Someone before was asking, is Terrell May a sell? I don't think so. Um, I think he just got screwed around last week because of the send-off for Dom Young. Definitely wouldn't worry about selling Terrell May. Definitely not. Um, other cheaper options, uh, you know, if you don't want to go Flegler, I think um, Josh Kerr could be still an option. Otherwise, I like Jamin Jolliffe at a cheaper price. Or, probably should give his, his just due, uh, Stefano Oichikamanu. He's actually ranked very highly for the top highest base power averaging players so far this year. Um, averaging 63, 84 last week, but he based 58 in that time. The weeks before that was kind of in the 40s, which I feel is more likely going to be what he's going to get you in the 50s. So I just price tag of 555k. He's probably going to be offering you not value, but just kind of a very solid option. But I, w- I wouldn't really um, um, think that you're going to get massive scores consistently out of uh, Stefano. But he does get um, uh, attacking stats. I missed talking about Luke Garner. Um, I did, but he also doesn't play this week. So there's probably no need to have to talk about him this week when um, he's not going to be an option who's playing this week. But um, yeah, that's probably that's probably the main reason why I skipped over him. Um, Taylor May, if people are looking at Taylor May, you know, I think people could sell him. People were looking to sell him last week. He didn't still. He still didn't score amazing, but I think the run coming up for them is pretty good. We're looking at Tigers, Cowboys, Souths, Bulldogs, Warriors, Sharks, Dragons for Penrith. So I think I'd be pretty happy to keep Telemay for this run. So, like for me personally, I'm probably going to be holding. Um, all right, guys. So I think in terms of my trades for this week, uh, big issues is Dom Young, and also you can probably say Dillbags. And probably uh, who else is an issue? Uh, Spencer Lenu has been an issue for since round one. 
So I'm probably not going to boost this week. I think I've used three boosts already. I don't think I want to do my fourth boost <clears throat> um, in a row. So what's my rank? Uh, terrible. It's like 59.9k. So my initial thoughts for moves this week were to... Um, I don't think I can afford Manu. Um, well, I mean, I can do Dom Young. Actually, I haven't even I haven't even really really played around with this. What was I going to do? Sorry, all over the shop. So I think the people I was going to trade out Dom Young was one, and I think I was going to get um, Schiller. So if I just quickly search for Schiller, uh, a lot of money in the bank. It would mean that moving forward, my um, <clears throat> My center wing is not the strongest with Val Holmes, RTS. It would be like Val Holmes, RTS, um, Tell and May, and then one of Bostock, Schiller, Ethan Strange, or... Uh, well, yeah, one of Ethan Strange, Bostock, or Schiller, which I'll probably have to um, eventually upgrade, which Bostock could be an upgrade next week. Um, but that's my initial thought. Just get Schiller in. I'm happy to play him this week versus the Titans. And then I think it's about time I get rid of Spencer Lenu. And because of Josh Curran... Um, I can now flip him up to, sec uh, to front and forward, which is great because it solves my Liam Henry issue. I don't need to play Sam Hughes now. And then that means I've got 738k to play for a second or a forward. Um, and we kind of spoke about them in depth earlier. So I'm thinking Eli Katoa this week. I think I like the Bulldogs matchup. Um, Grant Katoa and Pappy feels like good exposure to Melbourne Storm uh, as well. So, sorry. Just trying to find this, not stats. Where's the round six key stats? Anyway, Katoa, there he is. So I can get someone like um, Eli Katoa. That leaves me 56k in the bank. These could just be my two moves next week, uh, for for this week. Um, and then next week, if I decide to get Cleary, I'll have to free up like another 150k, which I could very easily do next week. I could maybe do something like a Bostock to a Kale Iro because Bostock's got a break in of 10. But if he kind of starts dipping in price after that, then I might look to move him on next week for a KL Eero. That would free up like 300k. That could be my money in the bank to go maybe either Brooks or Dillbags to Cleary in round 7. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking early thoughts for uh, for next week. But I think for this week it would be probably this. So if I confirm these trades, and hopefully I just don't overthink and I just stick with this, um, I would very easily play... Um, Ethan Strange and Schiller in my 17 this week. VC would be on Pappy, Captaincy on Hines. Um, in terms of reserves, Strange and Turbo would be locked in. Uh, I'd probably then play... I don't think I'd play Burbo it's playing at centre versus the Warriors. Smithies, I think... I'm just going to double-check team list, but I have a feeling Hallsborough wasn't named again for the Raiders. So I think he picked up an injury. Um... Yeah, so there's no Corey Horsburgh. So I think Smithies, I know, again, apologies, I told people he was a sell last week. But <clears throat> um, yeah, he actually scored quite well because of in-game injuries. So I'll probably play him again this week. I'll play everyone against the Titans just for the potential attacking stats. And then I'll probably just play, play Brooks anyway. Brooks, oh, like I was really happy last week he got that try assist to Turbo. He was so close, though, to another tri-assist for Corey Waddell. I was really hoping for more points from him, but it is what it is. Um, so, yeah, so that would pretty much be my team for this week. I'm now thinking about maybe Val Holmes gets some kind of armband, but I'll probably stick with Pappy and Nico Hines. It was my first gut instinct. Um, and, yeah, that's, that solves two of my issues with Dispenser Lenyu and Dom Young. If I boosted, it'd probably be to get rid of maybe Talangi or maybe Dillbags, but they feel like luxury, so I'm probably not going to be doing that. Um, this week so that's probably what my team's going to look like for this week so that's that uh, we'll do about five more minutes of Q&A and then we'll wrap it up there my throat is actually starting to hurt me now but I should be able to do a Q&A stream this week on Thursday so don't worry if I don't get to any of your questions we'll do a dedicated Q&A on Thursday for sure but yeah get your questions coming in and in the meantime do give the stream a like if you have enjoyed it as well um, Amand, what about Cleary next week? I kind of ran, ran through my Cleary plan, so I won't go into that. Um, Salmon, a sell? Yeah, look, Jamin Salmon, he's been named at lock again, but I know my rank sucks, but I'm very happy with my prediction about Jamin Salmon beginning of the season when I said I started with Curran over him, just thinking he was just going to be a mid-30s guy, and he's gone 29, 36, 35, 35, 35. Like, you cannot make it up. So... 
Yes, look, he's not going to go down in price if he just keeps pumping out 35s, but he's just an option who, like, the only utility value to him is that he's a dual. But look, if you can sell him for Schiller, go ahead and do it, I reckon. When will Teddy be back? So last I read was that Teddy was tracking well, so he could be back as soon as next week. So another thing with Manu, p- people who are buying Manu this week, um, obviously great for this week. Maybe there's an outside chance he plays fullback next week as well. But I have a feeling that Teddy's going to be back next week, just based on what I've read in terms of um, how he's tracking. Would I consider doing fan Supercoach team reviews in the future? Um, I could. The only issue with that is I, like, look, I appreciate having um, a nice following, but so many people message, especially now with Instagram. I find Instagram is a place where people, a lot of people message their teams and stuff. It's so hard to kind of, um, uh, it's so hard to kind of go through all of them. I have dabbled with, like, you know, if I did, like, say, say like a Patreon as a dedicated service, but at the same time, personally, I'm not thinking I'll do that at least anytime soon just because. I'm giving advice about fantasy games, which is ultimately a fantasy at the end of the day. And as you can see, I get a lot of things wrong. If I start charging people money and then giving trades that don't work out, like it just, to me, feels like it leaves a negative taste. So I, what I hope for is that what I do for free for everyone covers enough questions. So I'll consider it, but that's kind of my general thoughts on that whole thing. Uh, Ashwin, is Joe Chan a sell? He probably is. Named 18th man. I mean, it'd be it'd be funny if he um, gets named in the uh, in the final team, uh, maybe for like a Sean Blore. But yeah, look on current information, yeah, he's probably a sell. It doesn't look like he's going to come back into that team anymore. Am I not playing Sam Hughes for another seventy score? Ah, don't rub it in, Ian. Don't rub it in. That that killed me last week. Who to sell for Xavier Savage in a few weeks? In a few weeks' time, you're probably looking at Origin players. So I quite like Marzu. I'm gonna shout. I'm gonna throw out Marzu as a pod. Uh, I got Kato and Manu last week. Shift to pod. Great work. You've got. It's always a good feeling when you have the players who everyone else is trading in. I felt that way a bit smugly at the beginning of the season when I already owned Curran. I think I owned. Who else did I own? Who was doing kind of okay? Bostock was another one. But then I shot myself in the foot and I sold KP, which was just screwed me over. What to do with Galvin? Uh, keep. You've already kept him for one week. He'll be back next week. He's got a mad negative break even. Negative 44. No question. You just keep him. He'll make plenty of money. Is Fenor Blake a trade-in? Uh, yes, if you are shopping in the front row forward, you could trade in Fenor Blake. Been a bit concerned with his work rate in the last few games. So, well, actually, last week was better. 52 in base. Um, so, actually, it's been a bit, that's actually his highest base all season long. Uh, look, he's expensive, 687k, but we know he can get attacking stats, and they've got a good run. So if you're willing to pay up big in front of forward, which I'm not necessarily a massive fan of, but if you're happy to, like I think he's perfectly fine. Um, uh, current front of forward and Lindsay Collins to Eli Katoa. Yeah, that feels like really good moves, Aaron. Um, hey, man, uh, from Stefanos. I've only used one boost. My trades this week are now deal bags to Manu, Labot to Schiller. Should I boost Lob to Iro? Um, no, I wouldn't do that last boost. Iro is not going to change in price this week. I think I definitely want to wait and see next week team list before I would be doing that boost. So I think I'd probably hold the boost in that situation. Um, thoughts on Chevy Stewart this week? Uh, so I kind of spoke about a lot of these cheapies towards the beginning of the stream. I think you just need to wait because um, Hopper Whitey will be back next week. He could maybe cause a bit of a background uh, a backline reshuffle for the Raiders so I'm not keen on jumping on Chevy Stewart this week um, Hutchinson a slow burn yes he's kind of in the same bracket as like a Jamin Salmon um, he's probably been a little bit better in that he at least had one score where he scored over 60 but yes he is a slow burn um, if you can down, if he's your downgrade to say someone like a Schiller I think perfectly fine they've got Melbourne Newcastle and then a buy yeah like he's not a long term hold is Luke Brooks a trade uh, you could trade Brooks this week. I'm potentially looking at just selling him next week for Cleary. But I have even dabbled with keeping Brooks at least for next week just because he will have the Titans. So I think for me personally, um, he scored well He scored well enough against Penrith. I'm hoping he does well against the Warriors. I might give him the Titans matchup and then after that I might, might move him on at that point on. Pick two out of Katoa, SJ, Manu and Grant. Oh, God, that's tough. Um, I am going to say if I had to pick the best two out of those... I'd to pick the best two. Um, SJ 
SJ and actually no, I don't know. My God, that's hard. Part of me says Grant, just because the run's really good. <clears throat> I'd rank Grant over Katoa, just about. And then I think I take SJ over Manu. I'm gonna say SJ and Grant, but that's not easy. That's not, that's a hard one. <laughs> um, all right, my throat is killing me, but we'll wrap it up on this final super chat. Thank you so much from Jake, five bucks. Very much appreciate it. You're buying my afternoon coffee tomorrow. Um, thoughts: Talangi for Schiller, Liam Henry for Willison, Salmon for Crichton, and bank the cash for Cleary or SJ next week. So, Salmon to Crichton. I've I've voiced my concerns about Angus, but I I think it's still an upgrade going Salmon to him, but. It, could be a bit sideways. Um, Talangi for Schiller, I think, is fine because I think Talangi may take still a few weeks before he gets back into the team. Um, Liam Henry, yeah, I haven't really spoken about him, but yeah, his cash gen could pretty much have peaked by now. That feels personally still a little bit sideways. Um, I don't think Willison or him are going to massively outscore each other or be that different. So, like, I guess you're, you're freeing up, like, what, 60k? Um, that feels like not enough for a boost. If you can do one of the other two trades and still have enough money to get Cleary next week I'd probably just do that and not do the boost of Henry to Willison um, how many coffees a day um, I only have two coffees a day I, I max it out at that um, all right guys thank you so much for watching really appreciate it a uh, very long stream but um, it was a fun one hopefully you answered a lot of your questions hopefully back as well um, on Thursday <clears throat> uh, Dan my lead code is 637281 um, so yeah thanks all for tuning in and uh, hopefully catch you all on Thursday and uh See you in the next one. Have a good evening. Cheers.